G'day everyone, and let me show you how to color grade an image to make it more dramatic in Photoshop. My name is Hoi, and in this video, we'll turn this image from this to this using gradient maps, luminosity mask, a radial gradient, and text. Okay, so to get started, let's open the file that we're going to be using. If you want to follow along, just click on the description below. Let's go to File. Open, navigate to the folder that you've got your image saved under, click on the image and then press open. Now the first thing I'll do is just to zoom in a bit so you can see the picture bigger. So on my keyboard, command zero and that will fit it to screen. The next thing we'll do is unlock this layer by pressing this padlock here and that will enable us to make any changes that we want. We're going to double click on this name of the layer and then we're going to name it to something like model and press return on my keyboard. Now the next thing we're going to do is apply the black and red color that you saw in the intro. And to do that, we're going to use a gradient map. So go to your adjustment layer icon here, click on that and then go to gradient map. Now don't be confused about this gradient here. Don't click on this gradient option here. We'll use that later. It's slightly different for the time being. We'll use this gradient map. Now, <laughs> this image looks a bit ghostly and that's because it's using the colors, my foreground and background and assigning it to the dark, mid tones and the light areas. So don't be alarmed, we're gonna change that. Let's go to the gradient map here. It's in your properties panel. If you don't see your properties panel, go up to window and just make sure property is selected. Just click once on this gradient map here. Make sure you've got basic selected and we'll choose this first one, foreground to background. So let's just explain what a gradient map is before we actually use it. So what a gradient map does is to assign the colors of the gradient to the highlights, midtones, and shadows to an image. And this is why you see this color scheme here being applied to the model layer here. So this color stop here represents the color that will be assigned or mapped to the darker areas, the shadows. And you can see that by uh, looking at her hair. Because her hair is dark, the black will be covering all the areas that are in darker shades, in the shadows. Whereas in the opposite side, here, the color stop is white. Anywhere that is white or bright, it would assign the color white to it. And then in between, it would assign a gradient to shades in between here. So let's convert our black and white gradient to the colors that we want. So I'm gonna double click on this color stop here and then just move this color because to the center of the screen. I'm going to choose this deep dark color here, not quite 100% black here, because that's not the look I'm going for. Sort of somewhere here, you can barely see the difference. I'm not sure whether it's showing up on the screen for you to discern, but it's not quite 100% black, but it's dark enough. Something like this would do. I'm going to press OK. Again, this kind of darkish brownish color will be assigned to the shadow or the dark areas. Perhaps you can see it even better the result when we change this color stop to a reddish color. So double click on that and we're going to choose something like this, the red, and you can see that effect a little bit better. I'm going to press OK on this panel and let's just reiterate what this does again. On the right of this bar, represents the highlights, the lighter areas. And what it's saying is that these lighter areas, we're going to map or assign red to all the lighter areas, which is why you see red basically plastered all over the image. And then there's a blend of colors here and Photoshop will assign these blend of colors on these tones. So let's click OK here to accept the change. And here we have quite a flat black and red image. It's nothing special. We can do this without a gradient map. There's a lot of ways to do it. So what we want to do is to add some depth to this image. Now you can do that by adding shadow to an object, but we're going to go to the other side of the spectrum and add lighting to it. And that will give us more depth to the picture. We're going to use what they call a luminance mask. 
And that's just a fancy way of saying we're going to make a selection of the bright pixels and then paint in those bright pixels with white to sort of simulate the lighting effect. Let's go to our channels panel here. If you don't have your channels panel, go to windows and then just make sure channels is selected. Now what I forgot to do is turn off the gradient map. So let's go back to layers and just turn off the gradient map here. That will return the picture to the original state. Go back to channels and here you have all the channels that makes up the colors of this image. So RGB got a red channel, green channel and blue channel here and together they'll make up all the colors that you see on screen here. So here you see the gradient map here so we can ignore that because that's what we made just a few seconds ago. What we want to do is select the bright pixels of this image here and we can do that by pressing command on our keyboard and then clicking once on the icon here. Not the word but on the image itself. Now once I've done that you can see these marching ants around the picture. What these marching ants highlight is the brightest pixels of this image. So what we want to do is find even brighter pixels than this. To do that, we'll make a channel out of this by pressing this channel icon here. And I'm going to select this alpha channel. And what this alpha channel shows is the selection that we've made. In a channel, black conceals and white reveals. So we want to pick out the even brighter areas of these bright areas that is highlighted. To do that, we need to make an intersection of this channel. We're going to press Command Option Shift and then X should appear. Once it has appeared, click once on your mouse and then another selection will come out. And these pixels represent the brightest areas of the other bright areas that we've already selected. I hope that makes sense, but we'll do that again just to make sure that the concept lands. So let's make a channel out of that. And you can see that there's another alpha channel here. I'm just going to move this panel up so I can give myself more space and just explain what's happening here. So what we've done is intersect the bright areas that we've made from the RGB channel with this channel here, the Alpha 1 channel, and then we've got even the brighter areas onto another separate channel. So all we're doing is picking out the brightest of the bright pixels. And we've done that once here, and then we've done it again here. And because we want our effect to be subtle, I'm going to do it once more. So I'm going to intersect this selection with another. So on my keyboard, I'm going to press Command Option Shift and now I'm going to press once on my mouse. And now you can see that the selection has changed, which indicate that it's selecting the brightest pixels of this channel here. I'm going to make a channel again and Alpha 3 will show up. And you can see that it will get progressively darker and darker. And that is because here on this Alpha 3 channel is only showing the brightest of the brightest pixels from Alpha 2. And the reason why we've done three Alpha channels is because we want the lighting effect on her face to be subtle. So when we paint over her face with white, only a very subtle effect will come out. If we use this channel, there's a lot of brightness coming onto her face and onto her shoulder. And so basically her whole body will be bathed in light, which is not what we want. We can use Alpha 2. Obviously this is darker than Alpha 1, but we want to go for a subtle look, which is why we've done multiple channels. Now we can create as many Alpha channels as we want and the picture will become darker and darker and only the most bright pixels from that image will show. But I think three is enough to demonstrate the point. So let's go back up to the RGB channel. Let's click on that once. That will return the image back to the original colors. Now make sure you still got the channel selected. You know that Alpha 3 is selected by these marching ants here. If for some reason it's not selected, and I'll simulate that by pressing Command D to deselect, all you need to do is Command click on this alpha channel here. And that will load the selection again. And this is most important. So if you don't have the alpha 3 channel selected, make sure you click on that. 
So let's go back to our layers panel by clicking here. I'm going to turn my gradient map back on and then create a normal layer by clicking on this icon here. Now the next step is literally to paint on the effect. To do that, let's go to our brush tool over here or we can hit B on our keyboard. Now set your opacity to 100 and flow a really low flow, something like 5% and then press enter. I'm going to resize my brush by pressing the left bracket key, which is next to the P key on my keyboard, something like this. And then I'm just going to paint over this until I get the effect that I want. Now I'm going to deliberately go over the line here just to demonstrate what to do if you've gone outside of that. I'll come back to that on how to fix it, but let's just paint in the light on the shoulders. Now we want the effect to be subtle, so you don't need to go over it that many times, but something like this will be fine. Now already you can see that the image pops out a little bit more than before. So if I turn off this layer that we've created, that looks much better if I turn it back on. Now let's address this point where I've deliberately brushed outside the area because we're not all perfect and we won't get it right at the first time. So um, I don't want to pretend that, you know, the first time you get it right. So let's see how we can fix that. The quickest way is to use your eraser tool. It's over here or you can press E on your keyboard, E for eraser. Get your opacity to 100%, your flow at 100%, and just make sure you've got a hard brush. So click on this and make sure that your hardness is all the way to 100. Now I'm going to zoom in so I can make a better selection by pressing Option on the keyboard and scroll wheel mouse up. And then I'm going to pan down a bit by pressing Spacebar and then dragging my mouse down. I'm going to resize my brush by pressing the left bracket key which is next to the P on the keyboard something like this, and then I'm just going to erase it away. Now you can see that this is a manual effort and I'm not a big fan of it. So what I'm going to show you is probably my preferred method. So I'm going to zoom out, fit the image to screen by pressing Command-0, and let's just do it an automatic way by making a mask. I'm going to select my model layer here, click once on that. I'm going to go up to select and select subject. It's going to say, well, you've already got a selection here. We're going to discard your current selection here. Do you want to continue? Yes, we want to discard that. So I'm going to press OK. Photoshop will have a think about it. And then it's made a selection around the model. Now to make a mask, let's go down to the mask icon here. The mask is not where we need it. The mask is perfect, but it's on the wrong layer. So there's an easy fix. So we don't need to redo the mask. So just move up to your mask, click and drag all the way up to layer one and then release. Now let's see the effect that it has. So I'm going to turn off the mask by pressing shift on my keyboard and clicking on the mask. So if you look here, you can see the white outside the model's face. Now if I enable the mask again by pressing shift and clicking on the mask, now it's gone. So that's probably an automatic or an easy way to get rid of any mistakes. Again, the other way is simply manually erasing it by using the eraser tool. There's no right or wrong, it just depends on what you like to do. Okay, so the picture now looks pretty good. If I turn off the lighting effect, this is what we have. If I turn it back on again, this is what we have. And I would say that this looks much better than the flat image. Now, if I'm honest, the background looks a bit flat now. And it would be good if we have some depth to that as well. So what we're going to do is add some light again to the background. This time, we use a gradient. Not the gradient map, the gradient. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon here. Go all the way up to gradient. And your setting might be different to mine. So let's just go through one by one. Click on this bar here. And then click on basic. We can go to 
this one, foreground to transparent. Click once here. Double click on this color stop to make sure that you've got it on white. Click OK. Double click here. This one, because the color is transparent, so it doesn't matter what color I choose, it doesn't have any effect because the opacity is zero. So if I just prove that to you by clicking on the stop here, the opacity on this side is zero. The opacity here is 100%. So what we're doing is going from white to transparent. Once we're OK with that, press OK. Here we want a radial gradient. So click once here and press once here. You can leave all the settings as it is and then press OK. Now, the reason why the gradient is here, but the reason why it's red is because it's underneath the gradient map layer. And remember, the color of the gradient map is black to red. So what we need to do is just move this layer all the way up to the top and that will show the effect that we're going for. Now we have two problems. The first is that the gradient is in front of the model, which obscures the main subject. So we need to put the gradient behind her. The other one is that it's too intense. So let's fix both problems, starting with the intensity problem. But first, let's move the gradient to where we want it. So to do that, double click on this icon here. Once you're here, you can click and drag the gradient to where you want it, something like this. And I'm going to press OK to confirm the change. To reduce the intensity of this, I can change the blend mode. So here we've got a normal blend mode. I'm going to change it to something like overlay or soft lights. Either one I think works. You can scroll through to see which one works for you. I've done some experimentation. I think overlay or soft light produces the best results. So I'm going to click on soft light. And now it looks okay. Her face looks a bit washed out and that's because the gradient is still in front of her. So let's address that. We can do that by masking the gradient. We don't need to recreate the mask because we've already got one here. We can reuse this mask and replicate it for this layer. With option press on my keyboard, I'm going to drag it all the way up to the top layer and then release the buttons. It's going to ask me whether I want to replace the mask. I'm going to press yes. So the problem is that the gradient is on her face. It's not behind her. So let's just check that by just changing the blend mode again so you can see that a bit clearer. See, if I change the blend mode from soft light to normal, you can see much clearer that the gradient is in front of her face. And that's because the mask is inverted. We want the gradient to be around her, not in front of her. The easiest way to do that is to invert the mask that we just replicated. So click once here and press Command I on your keyboard to invert the mask. And that looks much better already. Now I'm going to switch the blend mode from normal back to soft light to reduce the intensity of that. And there you have this sort of subtle glow behind her. So let's just check that out by turning it off. And this is on again, and that looks great. Now the final step that we're gonna do, just to make it look like a professional poster or a book cover, is to add some text. I'm gonna go to my text icon here, or you can press T on your keyboard. I'm going to click once here. I'm gonna type something like red weapon here. I'm going to confirm that change by pressing the move tool and then just drag the text to a position something like this. And because I've set the spacing of my text to be perfect, yours might not be like this. So if you want to change the spacing between your text or what they call the leading, just go onto your type tool here. We'll type T on your keyboard and just select all. You can control the leading by going to your properties panel. And here is your leading here. So I can decrease it and that will go up. You can see on the screen here. And then if I increase it, you can see that the leading or the spacing between the two sentences increases. So I'm going to just undo that because I was fine with the previous settings. And you can also increase or decrease the spacing between the letters. So with the text still selected, I can go to this tracking here and then 
increase it or decrease it however much I like. When I'm fine with that, I'm going to press my move tool just to confirm that. And that's how you make a picture more dramatic by using gradient maps, luminosity masks and gradients in Photoshop. Now let's go over what we've learned. I'm going to reduce the size of my properties panel here so you can see my layers panel. I'm going to turn off the visibility of all these layers. So we started off with a model layer. The color, the composition of this model is fantastic already. After that, we added a gradient map. And a gradient map simply assigns different colors to different areas of the image. Next, we use luminosity mask to just bring out some lights on her face and shoulders to make it a little bit more 3D, a little bit more popping than the original photo. Now, we did the same thing to the background by using the gradient tool. And then we added some text just to make it feel like a professional poster or a book cover. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what your favorite technique was or what you would like to see in future videos. And if you learned something new, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when the next video is out.